Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and check it out. This is the SNK Neo Geo CD front loader. Uh, today what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be uh, tearing it apart, cleaning it up, and hopefully getting it look to look you know, as shiny and amazing and is just as good, potentially, or close to, as it did when it first came off the assembly line. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about this thing for a minute before we go into the cleaning process. And if you don't care about any of that, you just wanna see the teardown, go ahead, feel free to skip to this time code. Otherwise, stick around. Uh, so a little backstory with this particular console, I actually picked this up back in uh, October of 2017. I was in uh, Super Potato in Akihabara, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and I, I've told this story before, I don't usually buy stuff in that store, as weird as it is to say that I've actually been in there a few times, um, because the prices in there are usually not very good. But in this case, this thing, which is a very rare console, was sitting in their junk bin for $18. Now the reason for that is it had a big sticker on it just saying junk, broken, doesn't work, you know, something to that effect. Came with no controllers, didn't come with any cables, anything. Um, and I almost left it there, but then a buddy of mine named Ronald, what's up man, if you're watching, um, convinced me to buy it. He basically said like, look, you know, worst case scenario, I can probably tinker with the board and I can get that thing running. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. Cause it's a big, I mean, I know it sounds dumb. Like why would you pass up on that? But it's huge. And it, if for something to definitely not work, it would have been a huge investment in my suitcase, you know, when I could be getting other stuff. So whatever, I did it. And that was the correct decision. I got it back here. After I told that story the first time, there was actually a company that sent me some RGB SCART cables for this thing, so great. If I get it running, I have the best video quality. Uh, while I was there, I managed to pick up a, a, a controller for it as well, so all right, all right, great, I have that set up, but no power supply. Now, not too long ago, I was in Japan again, I was in Osaka, and I managed to pick up the uh, Neo Geo CD top, uh, top loader, and that actually included the power supply. So when I got it back here, I decided to use that power supply on this console and see what the results were. And the results were that it worked perfectly. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Not only was there nothing wrong with it, it even had a game inside of it. Yeah, I think it was like real about Fatal Fury Special. Um, but yeah, it had a game in it, it worked perfectly, there's nothing wrong with it at all. So that said, it's very odd that they would have tossed it, essentially, because Super Potato, of all places, is gonna know what this is. They're gonna know how to, you know, maybe not necessarily fix it, because there's nothing wrong with it, but to test it, even? Like, you know, I don't know. But point is, um, I'm glad I've got it, and I hope I don't screw it up here with what, I, what I'm about to do, but the thing is noticeably dirty, and I want to, at the very least, just clean up the plastic parts and maybe get some dust out of the board and just go from there. So if you have a Neo Geo CD front loader and you're looking at this video like, hey, maybe this will fix it. Probably not, unless the, the console is just dirty and that's the problem, which it very well could be. Um, this thing is known for having a faulty disk drive in particular, and it's not a very common machine. There was only 25,000 of these ever produced. So yeah, I also noticed no one on YouTube has done videos with these things. Uh, there's a couple people who have them, who've shown them for a second, but like a teardown, a repair, any of that kind of stuff, nobody seems to have done it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and be the first person on YouTube, apparently, to open up one of these things and show you what's on the inside. So the absolute first thing we're gonna do if we wanna get into this thing is you just flip it over and you'll see there's actually seven Phillips screw points, three on the bottom, four on the top. Very simple, all you have to do is go ahead and take this screwdriver, standard Phillips screwdriver, and go into those points and remove the screws. Now that the screws are out, all you have to do is take the lid off. Now be careful, because there is actually a ribbon here that's connecting the lid. So what you gotta do is flip it over, and what you'll see back here is a little board. Now this, of course, is the power button. This has four Phillips head screws on it. Once you have that off, you just basically can put it to the side, and then here you go, you have about 50% of the console here. This, of course, is the lid, uh, as you can see, it's got a lot of dirt and dust and grime in it, some scuff marks and all that stuff. Uh, what we're gonna do with this, since it's just plastic, is take it off to the side, uh, rinse it with some soap and water and scrubs and brushes, of course, and just do our absolute best to kind of get a nice shine out of it and get as much dust and dirt and stuff out of there as we possibly can. After we've removed the lid, you can you get down to, well, the next phase of this. You see a whole bunch of RF shielding. Now, I've already counted, and I believe there's 17 screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, 17. Again, all Phillips head screws. They probably, presumably anyway, are the same length as the rest of these. All right, now that the screws are out, we can take off this RF shielding. We've got it in two pieces here. Uh, we'll take that one off right there and this one off right here. Now, these might contain some dust and dirt and grime, which is pretty logical that they will. So I would actually recommend, you know, rinsing them up with soap and water just, again, to have less dust in there. Um, now, here's the thing. We're down to the board but it's not that easy. Uh, so I'm taking a look at this and I can already see that the way the drive is installed, it's put in over this bar, which means we have to take the drive out first. But to be honest, I'm not 100% sure on how to do that. Um, I see various screw points, but none of this really matters because this console does something I've never seen anybody else do. Uh, part of the way they've kind of barricaded some of this stuff is they've used zip ties. I've never seen a console use zip ties. Now, in order, what that essentially means is in order to get past them, I would have to actually break the zip ties. Now, I don't want to do that because they're factory. And of course, secondly, I also don't have any zip ties to replace them. So considering that this thing isn't actually broken, I don't think I'm going to do that. But instead, I will come up with a couple other ways to help clean this thing. Um, first and foremost, I want to clean the lens. So in order to do that, you see here there's two screws. Now, these are both Phillips head, but they're a little bit smaller. So if you have a smaller Phillips head screwdriver or a flat head that happens to fit, you can go ahead and remove those. If we take this off, now this thing's interesting. It has a little more weight than you might expect, but it's also magnetized. So if you feel a little resistance, that's why. So there's not much to do with this thing. You can wash this if you want, soap and water. Uh, just make sure, of course, that you let it sufficiently dry afterwards, just because, you know, this thing's gonna be very close to the lens. Uh, but what we're gonna do right here is you see, of course, the laser assembly. Now, what we're going to do is clean the laser right there itself. Now, for this, what I use is typically uh, Windex or window lean, as it's known in certain countries. Um, and and all you do is take a little bit of a you know, Q-tip and some Windex there, spray it on, get that like that, and then extraordinarily gently just kind of rub the lens ever so gently like that. Then turn it over, dry it like that. And that's it. That's all you really have to do in order to clean that thing. I, I wouldn't really do much else. Um, now you can do some spot cleaning in there if you want. Like I see a little bit of dust here, so I'm probably gonna kind of fish that out a little bit. But uh, beyond that, you don't really wanna mess with this too much unless you're actually having problems with it, which of course I'm not. So the only other thing I can think to do is within the plastic area, we can start cleaning some stuff up. Like I just have this, you know, Q-tip here. So I'm gonna take some the right there and clean along the edges there and just trying to get some of this dust and dirt and grime off of the plastic parts, particularly the CD, uh, the drive itself, the tray there, because that of course gets exposed to dust all the time when it's opened. Um, but yeah, in general, just kind of give it a nice spot clean if you want with a paper towel, not necessarily just a Q-tip, but as you can see, just some dirt and grime getting off there. So I've gone ahead and proceeded to actually rinse down and use soap and water on all the things that I could do. Uh, and this didn't make much of a difference, but there was some dust on there getting, you know, more of the RF shielding. You don't really need to dust those, but you know, it's good to do. And of course this piece as well. But the big, of course, winner here would be the top of the console, the lid here. Now there was a lot of dirt and grime on there that is now gone, which is wonderful. Um, um, there are a few scuff marks on this thing though uh, that I think I might be able to buff out with uh, Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser, which would be this stuff right here. This is basically like a fine um, sandpaper type of deal uh, with a little, uh, and basically you take it and you just kind of find, like there's a little mark right there. So you kind of take it and just kind of rub it along there and just try to buff out spots like that. And uh, yeah, there you go. It, it helps when the plastic is wet, by the way. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is look around the surface and see if I find any more like that, then give it another rinsing, and then I'll basically consider the top to be done. Should have mentioned this a moment ago, but Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser, be kind of careful with this stuff, because this stuff will you know, take logos off if you rub it over that. So make sure you're only using it over scuff marks, not necessarily scratches. It's probably not gonna really do anything for that. Uh, but at this point, what we're gonna do is we have to wait for this thing to dry, because I wanna clean more of the console itself, like the innards, 
but I'd rather the laser assembly like mechanism was completely in place before we do that. So at this point, what we're gonna do is just basically sit and wait for this thing to be completely dry. I do not want any moisture on this thing when I put it back in the console. So we're gonna sit it back into place. Now again, this thing is magnetized, but it still holds pretty nicely. Uh, also, we're just gonna go ahead and take these two screws and put them back into place. Remember, these are the only ones that are different, at least of the ones we've taken out. So now that that's back in place, I wanna clean the console as much as I can. Again, it's unfortunate that I can't actually get to the bottom piece and actually clean it up the way I'd like, but it's not worth the risk, especially because of those zip ties. So what we're gonna do is just do some spot cleaning. The first thing, the, the easiest, best thing we can do is just try to get as much dust out of that area as we possibly can. And for that, what I'm gonna do is take an electric duster. This is the Datavac electric duster. There's also, you can get cans of air duster and stuff like that, but basically all you do is just kind of blow air on there. And I apologize, it's gonna get a little loud here. Yeah, that's power. Now, uh, in my particular case, most of the dust seems to have accumulated in the back here, which makes sense, you're near open air, open ports. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more back there. It's not too bad up in front, I just kinda gave it a general go. I'm also definitely not going to aim it into the laser assembly though, so I'm just kinda leaving that alone. I'll leave that up to more precise spot cleaning. But I'm gonna continue with this on the board and just see if I can get anything else out of there. So after that, the only thing I can really think of to do here while we still have this open is to just try and get more dust out of tighter places. So again, and I'm gonna take some Q-tips and just kind of use them to wipe around certain areas. Like back here, there's a nice big clump of dust that's coming off right there, if you can see that. Look at that, lots of dust. So uh, particularly around plastic areas, but you might wanna also take a completely dry end and just kind of rub along some of the, the board a little bit, but you know, that's probably optional. It probably isn't gonna do a whole lot, but it's still nice to get some dust out of there. You can see some came off. So I've kind of completed that process. One thing to note, particularly with this console, is one of the real winners was, you see this uh, crevice here that basically, this basically this ring goes all the way around the console. This was caked with dust. I took a Q-tip with some Windex and went right around that. Got a lot of dust out of there. Um, but yeah, there's not really much else I can think of to do with this part of the console. So at this point, I think what we're gonna do is start putting it back together. We're going to basically take that RF shielding and just kind of install that. Uh, we'll take the back piece first and just kind of lays right back in there. There's really not much to that, it just kind of sits there. And then you take the other piece right here and uh, lay it down accordingly. The open exposed side, of course, being where the disc tray would pop out. So just kind of slide it into the spot and uh, just kind of sit it there. And it should fit in just like that. Now, there are 17 screws that go back in there. I'm sure you set those aside. You should have set off, off to the side if you've been doing this. Now that the screws are back in place, it's time to actually put the lid on top of this thing, or at least, well, part of that. We're going to take the lid, of course, and we're going to take the uh, power button and we're going to reattach it. Now that's relatively simple. It just kind of flips in like that. And then as you'll remember, there's four screws. So go ahead and put those into place. And there you go. That's what it'll look like when it's back in place. Now to flip it back over here, you'll also know it's correct when it says power correctly and it's not like upside down or wrong, but I don't think you'll screw it up. There's really only one way to do it. Once that's of course attached, it's time to simply put the lid on top of the console, which is extraordinarily simple. There you go, it just sits right back on. So then we're going to flip it over and you'll once again return these seven screws back into place. All right, now the console is back together and as you can see, the lid is cleaned. It's very far from perfect. It's very dull in a lot of ways. We're gonna work on that in a minute. But as I mentioned before, and as I'm sure you no doubt noticed, <laughs> I couldn't actually get the bottom part uh, disassembled. So I couldn't properly clean the bottom piece of plastic. So for that, we're gonna go with the backup method, which would be spot cleaning. So for that, really all I'm gonna do is take a paper towel and again some Windex and I'm just gonna kind of spray on here and just kind of rub it around and just do my best to clean any dirt and grime I can off of both the bottom and any possible remainders left on the lid. But uh, yeah, really not much more than just kind of doing this basically. And I'm gonna go ahead and rub it around and then we'll see what the results are like. Obviously far from perfect, but there is one other thing we can do to buff this out and make it look a little nicer. I've used this before many times. This is Pledge specifically orange pledge. Uh, you could use pretty much any version of this. It's just kind of a, a cleaning agent, all, all purpose. It'll bring out a nice shine and like a luster to the console, especially black consoles. They tend to do really well. Uh, you can use pretty much any version of this. In some countries, this is called Pronto, uh, but don't use moisturizing. I've heard uh, mixed results with that, but just a regular ass orange pledge is gonna be good. So basically all you do is kind of just take it, you know, like that, and then just kind of spray it around as I did, and then take, you know, 
a paper towel like this and just kind of go over all the major plastic points and then just kind of let it sit and soak and settle for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes and then we'll take a look at it. All right, and there we have it. It is all nice and clean as best we could possibly do anyway, anyway all things considered. But uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good or at least a lot better than it was. Uh, there's still some scarring and stuff that I can't really do much about, particularly on this type of matte finish. I get the feeling if I use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser on this, it would probably do more damage than good, so I'm not gonna do that, but I've tried my best to kind of clean some of those spots, but uh, yeah, and in general, it's definitely less dusty for sure, shinier and buff, more buffed out. But uh, yeah, just for the hell of it, even though I already know it works, let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, you guys can take a look at it for yourselves. So we'll power it on, and uh, terrible load times on this machine, it's infamous for that, but uh, you can take a look at the TV there. Obviously it is booting up to the dashboard. I assume most of you have never seen the dashboard. Obviously it just kind of loads, it's kind of obviously very early 90s. Uh, so it just kind of says it's looking for a CD. So we press the eject button here. This tray still works, of course. And I'm gonna pop in uh, King of Fighters 96. Uh, don't push this unless you have to. Use the digital version there and let it go back inside. And then it will go back over here and try to detect the disc. And then of course, basically says that it's loading the disc and obviously like i said terrible load times on this machine but uh yeah then it says push start button which i will go ahead and do and uh sure enough it is reading the game everybody no no issues there uh loading there yeah so yeah i uh obviously this thing turned out great uh what a what a steal man for 18 bucks basically is all this really cost me because um, I got the controllers later on, although admittedly I would have had extra controllers if I had waited. Uh, games were kind of cheap. I picked them up in Japan. Uh, and then the console itself, yeah, I got the free uh, RGB cables and uh, the power cable. This is the one we're being used uh, from the other Neo Geo CD. So, yeah, awesome. Basically a, a free a functional top loader or a front loader. How awesome is that? Uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped anybody or even if it just entertained your curiosity because personally I couldn't find any other uh, teardowns of this console. So it's just kind of cool to actually see what's inside there, even though obviously I couldn't go all the way on it. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope you found it interesting. Hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all later.